Good afternoon. I am Sister Betty Lywe, and welcome to our vigil prayer for Sister Tree Chaperone. It has been four months plus since our last sister has died, and we want to especially welcome the family of Sister Therese from Big Bay and Marquette, Michigan, who are with us today, namely Mary, her cousin, her nieces, Lori, and Sherry, and Cynthia, Larry, and Charlie. So thank you for being with us and praying with us today. Welcome also the Sisters of St. Joseph, our associates and friends. A special welcome to the reception members of 1950, namely Sister Mary Charity Dalton, Mary Ann Donovan, Richard Sagadin, Louise Michelle Summer, and Catherine Wagner. For the sake of the family, the vigil for our deceased is the principal celebration right by the Christian community in, in the time following death and before the funeral's liturgy. At this time, we call on God, on our God of mercy to receive the deceased into the kingdom of light and peace. We have entered this new season of autumn, a period of transition of harvest and dying. And Sister Therese and her death illustrates the beauty of letting go and the temporary nature of everything. So aware of God's presence with us, the gift of the Holy Spirit, we now quiet our minds and hearts. The soul of trees has been received by God along with the angels and saints already there with God. Can we pause to remember the saints of your own family and friends who are ready to receive you into everlasting glory? Quietly picture them and call them to mind. Mindful of God's great love for trees and for us, we now pray as one with all the sisters of St. Joseph throughout the ages and around the world. Together we sing just the refrain of beyond the moon and stars. Beyond the moon and stars, as deep as night, so great our hunger, Lord, to see your light. The sparrow finds her home beneath your wing. So may we come to rest where angels sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We come together this afternoon to pray in thanksgiving for the life and ministry of Sister Trees. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray. Let us pray together. God of the living and the dead, we ask that you admit Sister Trees to the joyful company of your saints and raise her on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. And now Sister Laura Gruber will proclaim our scripture reading. Amen. 
A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith in me. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to our God except through me. The living word of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. And we pause to reflect. And we turn to Christ now with confidence in our prayer of Sister Therese and Sister Amy Hereford from our leadership team will lead us in prayer. Our response is Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy death and sin, we pray. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who brings rest to our souls, give peace to Sister Therese forever, we pray. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge all of our deceased sisters, associates, relatives, friends, and benefactors, we pray. Christ have mercy. Trees loved the church, and so we pray that we may experience the length and breadth and depth of God's love that has been poured into our hearts so that we may be transformed and fully live as children of God, we pray. Christ have mercy. Trees had a deep affection for the gift of nature. We pray that we may see in the heavens and on earth and in the sea the handiwork of God and delight in God's gifts to us, we pray. Christ have mercy. For all who are recovering from natural disasters, that God will protect those in dangerous situations, help those who are recovering to establish, to reestablish their lives and guide all who, who assist them, assist those who have suffered loss, we pray. Christ have mercy. And for all those who are ill, particularly Kathleen Eagleston, that God's love and the healing care of our Carondelet Manor staff and the hospice staff continue to bring healing and bring that bring renewal to them in their care for others, we pray. Christ have mercy. And we conclude our prayer. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your heart and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And now at this time, we will 
have the reading of the names of the sisters and associates and staff who have died this past year. Associate Margaret Larson, Sister Carolyn Strack, Associate Maggie Mitchell, Sister Michael Therese Bauer, Jim Hampton, Sister Ann Strezek, Sister Michaela Zayner, Associate Carolyn Henry, Sister Mary Kay Dowling, Sister Kathleen Stack, Associate June Forrest, Sister Mary Damian Adams. And today we add to the communion of saints, Sister Therese Chaperone. And now let us share our own memories about Sister Therese, or if there is a, a story you would like to share for all of us to hear, I invite you to do that now. Mary Ellen. Okay. Those, those of you who knew Therese knew that she was very, um, she wanted to make sure people didn't call her Teresa. Yes. St. Therese was her patron, and that's the name she wanted. I got to know Therese when she was caring for our dear friend, Sister Elizabeth Deutsch, who was in um, at uh, Gleason Hall at the time. Therese was so good to Liz. She just took care of everything that she needed. She was always there when Liz needed her. But I got to personally know her after I had shoulder surgery a few years ago, and I spent a week in Gleason Hall. Therese was so good to me. I cannot tell you how, how she was just a very, anything she did, she did it very quietly. She didn't make a big deal out of anything. And I was so grateful to have her looking after me. Um, and what, what really was, I was grateful for, whenever I needed a shower, she got in the shower with me. And she was so, so respectful of, of people. And um, when she got sick a um, couple of weeks ago, um, when we knew she was uh, not doing well, I went in to see her. She did not want company. And Teresa and I were friends and she looked at me and she said, you're not gonna stay, are you? And I said, no, Teresa, I'm here to pray with you. I took her hand and I prayed with her and I, uh, put a sign of the cross on her forehead and told her she would be in my prayers. And her last words to me were, Mary Ellen, I'm praying for those people who are praying for me. May she rest in peace. Thank you so much, Mary Ellen. That was beautiful. Uh, Joan Coucher. Throughout the years, when I was a part of Sister Care, Therese was the most generous person to anyone. Often she volunteered to do laundry for people. She would bring the staff goodies, be it fruit, cookies, candy. She was very thoughtful and conscious of others, always wanting to help out in whatever way that could be. Sometimes it was quite overbearing <laughs> for some of us at some times, but we were very appreciative of her thoughts and her kindnesses. Thank you, Joan. You're welcome. Cynthia Whitehouse. Yes, I, I so remember and acknowledge her helpfulness. She was helpful my whole life in, in so many little ways. Like she, whenever she would come, to visit, she would, you know, sit with me and talk, especially as an adolescent, when I wasn't particularly getting along with my mother, she would <laughs> explain to me, you know, how, how, you know, my mother was and tried to make it all nice and good and, and help me through that. And when I was um, entering high school, I was, so where I live, we had Catholic school to eighth grade, but then in high school, there there was no more Catholic school. So suddenly I didn't 
you know, I needed a wardrobe because I didn't have a uniform anymore. So she came and she sat down and for weeks, she sewed me skirts and she made oh. little blouses for me. And, you know, she just, my parents didn't have a lot of money at the time. And so she just created this wardrobe for me, which was very lovely. And then she helped out, you know, when you say she helped out regardless, she would insist that our chandeliers had to be cleaned and she would take them down one piece at a time. And then she would take the china cabinet apart from my mother and clean every single piece whenever she'd visit. She never sat still. She just worked the whole time she was visiting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Pat Murphy. Yeah. This is a, uh, did work, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a good follow up because uh, some years back, Therese had some kind of an accident and she really damaged her arm. Um, I was, summertimes I lived in that community where she was. And the big question was, uh oh, this is going to be trouble. But Therese was the most humble person. She didn't make demands, but if she needed something, she let it be done to her. Um, and I think that was when I realized what a holy woman she was. And I think these last weeks, um, we see it again, where she allows, she accepted everything God offered her. Amen. Thank you, Pat. Amy Hereford. Uh, I, well, I share a birthday with, with Therese, so um, we have that connection. I, um, I also was privileged to, to visit with her a number of times while she was at Nazareth over the last couple of years. And it was just, just a privilege to walk with her in this time uh, when she was declining and, and struggling with the, you know, the various issues that come, come her way. So, um, but she, she didn't need me to help her with anything, but just really appreciated the, the presence and the listening. So um, yes, I, it's a very warm place in my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Nancy Corcoran. Um, thanks. Um, I met Therese, first of all, when I was um, in Hawaii teaching. She was at St. Joseph's Waipahu. And um, we reconnected when she came to Nazareth. Or I, no, I guess more when I came back to St. Louis. And one night she called me and she was all excited. And she said, um, you're working with transgender. And I said, uh, yeah, yes, I am. And we, we were different on, on different um, spectrums around church, I knew. And so I, I was just not ready for the next thing. And she said, oh, Nancy, have you read James Martin's book? No. And I hadn't. And she went on, she said, I have copied sections of it. I passed it out to all the sisters at Nazareth. I can't believe you haven't read it. You must read it. And I, I didn't say I would, because frankly, I haven't been overwhelmed with his writing, you know? Um, and so I didn't say I would read it. And I got off and Joan said, for God's sake, Therese Chaperone is reading it and passing it out. You better get that book under your belt. <laughs> and I did. And she said, James Martin is touching people that you never will. And um, that was so true. And I called Therese back and I, I thanked her. I said, Therese, oh, and she sent me all the copies that she had been sending to the sisters at Nazareth. And I said, Therese, thank you. Because I, I never would have read that book had she not said it. And it has opened more doors than I ever can imagine. So um, I just wanted to say thank you. To, and I wrote this up for the archives because I oh. think this is um, significant. And may we do that for one another. Thank you, Nancy. I have a lady at Nazareth Sisters. Um, I, I met so. Therese three years ago when I started at Nazareth. And um, 
She came in the first day I was alone as director of pastoral care and mission. And she said, I expect a lot from you. Oh. And um, it, it was pretty much true. I'd gotten a folder full of notes that she had left for my predecessor over the years. But um, <laughs> along with all of her comments and notes and um, thoughts, she had helpful things she did too. A lot of people don't know that for years she did the chapel laundry. Um, those of you that lived at the village may have heard her washer and dryer on at three in the morning. She was probably <laughs> doing the chapel laundry then. Um, and she felt so guilty when she broke her hip and had to move over to a uh, Carondelet Manor. But for years she went about doing things that no one would ever know. Um, she would wait until evening to deliver communion to certain people so nobody knew she was doing it. And that's how she wanted to be known and remembered as somebody that did things behind the scenes. So I really appreciate that. And in her last weeks, she was the same way. Um, I'd go up and see her and try to get others to go see her, even though she didn't want company. And um, she'd just say, you know, well, just remember, I'm watching. So um, she had her own spin on things, but she was delightful in her own way. She also had Kathleen Karbowski go out and get treats quite often for all of us in pastoral care. And um, yeah, you, you never knew what to expect. She was a quiet surprise. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed her quite a bit. Well put, Angie. For everybody, this is this. This is Angie Vorholt, who is the Director of Spiritual Care for the uh, campus of Nazareth and who is becoming an associate. Sister Jean Paul, do you want to go ahead? Yes, I'll be happy to. Um, we always think of Therese as the supportive background person, but I was out at Nazareth in the old Gleason Hall one day. And I was near the nurse's station and um, Therese came back to the nurse's station from being down the hall. And the head nurse said to her, Therese, I need for you to do something for us. And she said, yes. And evidently there was someone who was a new helper at Nazareth I'm not too sure what her status was, but she was not treating the patients as the head nurse thought she ought to. So she sent Therese down to set her straight about how a sister of St. Joseph would do that job. <laughs> and I thought that was very interesting. They recognized who she really was in her heart and what she had to share. So I thought that was neat. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> Thank I you just wanna say a few words. I, I just wanna say a few words about Trace. She and I were both brought up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And she lived on one end of it and I lived on the other end. And when we were both in communion, in, no, in uh, religious life, I would go up there and teach catechism on Sunday. And I would teach some of her relatives and sometimes her, fa her family would be there. It's a beautiful place where she lived. And then later on, of course, we, I entered and she entered. And then we both ended up here at the village and uh, she used to always come down and make sure I knew everything about everything. <laughs> All the news of the day. And that if she had some food or something, she would always bring it down to me. And that sometimes we'd eat it together. Otherwise, she would just bring it and go. And if somebody died, immediately the door would shoot, knock at the door and uh, let me know who died. <laughs> and then we both go over sometimes to see it. So we, and when I would go to see her of late, when she was over at Carondelet Manor, she would get tired talking to people. So then she would 
she would go like this to me, go. And I said, I'm not gonna go. I said, I came over here to talk to you. Then she put her hand down and she just laughed with me <laughs> as we both knew each other so well, you know. But anyway, um, she was really ready to go. I could tell that. And, but she was very, very friendly, you know, Therese was. And we could talk about her family because I knew them. And uh, anyway, I'm just glad she's where she is right now. She's happy. She wanted to go and God did take her. Thanks. Thank you, Helen. Thank you everyone for the beautiful uh, memories um, of Sister Teresa's life, especially of her daily ministry to the sick. And we'll continue on. So together, let us all pray. Eternal rest grant to her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And the hymn that sends us forth is we remember, and we'll do just the verse, I mean the refrain. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come. In your glory, Lord, we remember, we celebrate, we believe. And now, together we pray the Memorare to St. Joseph for the needs of our province, our congregation, and for our own individual needs. Together, remember, O most pure spouse of the Virgin Mary, my beloved patron, St. Joseph, that never was it known that anyone who invoked your protection and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I come to you and commend myself to you. Do not despise my petitions, dear foster father of our Redeemer, but accept them graciously. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit who lives in us guide our hearts, lead our minds, to deal well with the challenges in which we both we all find ourselves. Amen. This concludes our vigil prayer. Thank you for your participation.